Hi! Didn't know I was going to make this video. Today is May 20th, Saturday. And on Thursday night, I got some very surprising information. I went to go say goodnight to my ball python. Her name's Vela. And as I go to say goodnight to her, she had a large, very unexpected surprise to show me. She was coiled around a clutch of eggs that she has laid for me. Now, I've had Vela for 14 years. I knew she was a female. And unless she's been sneaking out at night to meet some boy I neither know nor approve of, I did not expect her to be laying eggs anytime soon. So, on Friday, I get up, I go to school, and as far as I know, I've got a ball python at home, and she's coiled around a bunch of unfertilized eggs. So I did a little bit of research looking into it. She's coiled around them. She's really protective of them. Got the maternal instinct going. So I wanted to look up and see how often does this happen, and how do I go about removing her from the eggs without, you know, upsetting her too much. As I look into it, I find out a few things. First, yes, ball pythons sometimes will lay an unfertilized egg. They call these slugs. But it'll be like one slug. Second, sometimes they'll lay a good clutch of eggs when the female is mated, and in that clutch there might be like one slug. But laying an entire clutch of unfertilized eggs? It's not really that common. It's quite unheard of. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I don't really know. I'm in some uncharted territory here. But then I found out about something I knew about, but didn't know that ball pythons could do this. Parthenogenesis. This is a very interesting adaptation that some animals have. Many reptiles have it. Komodo dragons do this. Uh, many different types of lizards and, apparently, some snakes as well. And it turns out ball pythons have been documented as sometimes doing this. It's pretty rare, but it can happen. So what is parthenogenesis? It's essentially asexual reproduction. The female, without any help from a male, is able to still reproduce. And she's then having all of her DNA in these eggs. And so really it's like she's making copies of herself, making clones of herself. So all of this is new information that I'm learning on Friday. And by the end of the school day, I'm starting to realize that it's very possible, very possible, that at home I've got a clutch of copies of Vela that are going to hatch in about 60 days. Here I am scrambling to figure out what am I supposed to do about this? Are they viable or not? If they are, is there something I need to be doing for like incubation? So I found out about candling the egg. Candling an egg is where you take the egg and you shine light through it. Kind of like shining a flashlight through your hand just to see the veins and maybe some of the bones. If there's veins that you can see when you're candling the egg, from what I understand, that is a guarantee. It's a viable egg. There's life in there. So I come home. It turns out Vela has still surrounded her clutch, but one of the eggs from her movement must have gotten separated from them. So that was the one I wanted to test. But I took out the egg and I candled it. Didn't use a real candle. You can use LED flashlights, similar materials to do this. And there were veins. I know that I have at least one viable egg. Parthenogenesis has occurred. Life found a way. So Friday afternoon, I'm learning how to set up incubation. And now here we are on May 20th. I got some work to do. I need to get these eggs away from her and into an incubation. Now some people would say, and I found this online, hey, just let mama do what she's going to do. For millions of years, female ball pythons have been able to take care of their eggs just fine. You can leave her alone. And normally I would agree. However, I don't know that I have the right humidity set up. These eggs need proper humidity and temperature control. And while I do certainly help out my Vela in that regard, it's not as specific as it needs to be for these eggs. I emailed my friend, Matt Kenny, he's a chemist, let him know what was going on. Him and I have enjoyed reptiles over the years. And he told me I need to get them in an incubator ASAP. And he wanted me to film it when I remove the eggs. Because mom's going to attack me. Well, Matt, I'm going to do just that.
So I got my materials, I need to set up my incubation, and I definitely want to get this stuff on film. How often am I going to have my ball python around a clutch of eggs and get to experience this? I got a lot of work to do today. I think I'm ready to transfer the eggs. I'm looking for somewhere between 88 and 89 degrees Fahrenheit. I can go a little bit outside of that window, but that's the sweet spot. I've got this incubator. It's for chicken eggs, and I admit... I know that this is not recommended for snake eggs, but on the budget that I've got, this was the best option. You can see I'm at an 88.9 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's been stable at that temperature for several hours now. According to what I had to set it for, though, with the egg incubator, 96.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, that's being measured by this thermometer here that's taped to the very top, which is very close to where the coils are on the inside. So at that reading, it's 96 degrees, but according to this thermometer, which I have set down there in the bottom, that's where I'm registering 88 degrees, almost 89. And that's where I'm going to put the eggs. So I'm going to monitor this often, multiple thermometers, but I think I'm ready to go. And what's also nice is the humidity is right where I want it to be, right around 80%. On the inside... I do have the screen that came with it plus vermiculite to keep the moisture going. Now I want to be clear too, my incubation that I'm setting up, this is not a tutorial, this is not a how-to video, this is just a how I'm doing it video. There are many better ways to do it, uh, especially if you know the eggs are coming. I was kind of caught off guard here, so I'm doing the best I can, but this is pretty exciting. And here's Vela, and there's that egg that she kind of pushed away from the others. It's very important to keep the egg in the same orientation if you do move it because if you invert it, it could be that the veins detach and the, the whatever is inside that egg will die. So I made sure to mark it. I marked it with a dot so that way I'd know that it's different than the rest of the clutch as far as this is the one that she pushed out. You know too how like it's when you are in the shower, that's when the repairman rings the doorbell? Or it's the one time that you have like a friend who needs a ride or a coworker, and that's when you have a really messy car. Yeah. Well, Vela decided to lay eggs here, and I, I want to come clean on something. This is not the normal substrate that I use. Coconut mulch is way better for retaining moisture. This is just some hamster bedding, and I had some. It's worked for me in a pinch before. What's up, baby? She moved away from it to get a drink from her water dish not too long ago. And when she did that, I was able to see with her clutch of eggs... And we've got four that she's surrounding, plus a fifth one that looks like a slug. The slugs are definitely smaller and just don't look the same as the others. Okay, so as I go to do this, yes, I am going to be putting on some gloves here. I don't think she's actually going to bite me, but also better safe than sorry, especially when dealing with a possessive mother, maternal instinct, and also I just don't know, <laughs> so I'm not going to take any chances. Her and I have had a very strong, very good relationship for 14 years, and I don't want to mess that up. Move this little wooden den I give her. Let's start here. Maybe you don't mind me moving this egg. Okay, now for the others. Now that that one's done, I'll take this black t-shirt. And I'm just going to drape it over her, so that way she doesn't really see what's going on. I've been told that as soon as I pick her up, and she's off the eggs, that all this maternal instinct just goes away. And <laughs> I want to I wanna trust them, but I can't help but be skeptical. I've never seen her behave like this. Here we go. It's a little bit easier going from this side. Let's see what you got, baby. OK. 
Okay. I gotta admit, already lifting her up and off those eggs, she's acting like the snake I know. I want to make it clear, I don't normally handle her with gloves. I'm never worried about her biting me. But this was just a, a situation I have not been in before. But she seems pretty calmed down now, and yeah, we're cool again. Back to the matter at hand, though. This egg seems separate from the rest. I'm going to take it first. Usually the clutch is stuck together. I don't use care. Don't want to drop it. And these look like they are stuck together. There's the slug. These other three, though, could be viable. Okay. Okay, Mom, your duties are done. I'm going to take my shirt back. Okay, now I did make sure to keep track of which way they are orientated. I'm just going to put a little X on each one, just in case. It looks pretty obvious as to where they're flat on the bottom, but even so, I want to make sure I don't mess anything up. And then that X is different than the, the circle that I put on the other one, so I can tell the difference. I'm still going to incubate all of them just to see. Unless I see signs of the, the circled one being rotten or any others being rotten, then I'll, I'll remove those. I'm going to take these into my bathroom where it's nice and dark and I can turn off the lights. There's no windows. And I'm going to test them with a flashlight to see if I see veins in the rest of these too. Moment of truth. I'm going to use an LED light. That seems to work pretty well for doing this these days. Lights out! And moment of truth. Here we go. Oh, sweet. Can you see that? Oh, I can totally see the veins on the eggs when I put the light just like this. Definite veins. This is like rock solid evidence of parthenogenesis. My python, which has not mated with a male, not even in contact with a male, has laid viable eggs. Let's test this one. Veins right there in the second one. Third one. Yes, veins in the third one. This was the second one. Here's our third one. So exciting. Here's our fourth one. Veins, veins, veins. This is awesome. Awesome. Oh. Sorry if that was really loud for the camera. This is awesome. Oh, now check this out. Here's the slug. And this is so great that I have a slug here because this is kind of like a control. And these are the experimental ones. This is going to show you what it looks like when it's not fertilized. Look at that, it's just yellow. Veins with redness, translucent yellow. Veins with redness, translucent yellow. I am super geeked about this. I'm gonna have possibly four, maybe even five, if that other one still hatches. Five baby ball pythons are so adorable. Time to incubate. All right, I'm going to carefully lift this off, and I'm going to carefully set them in here. I'm going to keep that temperature probe close to the clutch, so that way I know what temperature that's saying. That's the temperature I care most about. Put this little, this little champ, this little fighter that Mama abandoned, I'm going to put him right there. Actually, I should say I'm going to put her right there. These are all DNA clones of Vela, who is obviously a female. And there's the rest. All centered right there. I'm going to keep the temperature probe on top of them just a little bit. Because that's what I want to know. I want to know the surface temperature that they have. So that way, if it's too warm there, I know it's too warm for the eggs. Now I'm going to close it up. Make sure that climbs. I'm going to make sure to watch that this one reaches somewhere between 88 and 89 and what's nice is I've got controls here to 
raise or lower the temperature in case it's not exactly where I want it. I'm going to make sure that it maintains that temperature. Oh. And I got about 60 days to go. Well, as you can see, this video is called part one, and I don't know how many parts there's going to be to this, but I, I am going to share with you guys what happens to these eggs. I have no idea. I might be really bad at this. This is my first time doing it. So I'm going to read as much as I can. I'm going to research as much as I can, but mistakes happen in science. Mistakes happen along the way. I really hope I don't make any. This is really important to me. Uh, as you know, I raise monarchs, and I love those things, and those are strangers to me. So guess how I feel about her eggs? This is like her, her shot to get her DNA out there for generations to come. So I don't know when they're coming, but we're going to see some updates to this as they go. Maybe there will just be a part two, and that's when I let you know it didn't work. The eggs are dead. I messed up somewhere. And if so, I'll be fully honest, and I'll disclose where that happened so others can learn from this. But maybe there will be multiple parts after this one, and, and maybe the last one will actually show some, uh, some baby ball pythons. But, yeah, parthenogenesis, she don't need a man. Okay, bye.